guys, today we're keeping it in the family with some of your favorite NBC stars and we're getting started with the show we all just can't get enough of. I'm so happy you guys were able to make it. Thank you. Thanks I feel us. like we have our own this is us moment right now. Just it is. The energy. Why do you think so many people from different walks of life, different generations just absolutely love the show? And by the way, if you say you don't watch a show, it's like look down upon. <laughs> that's how I got, that's no, how I watched my first couple episodes. Everyone's like, oh, you haven't no, seen no, it? No, yeah, it's we, one of those we're things. In the, we're in the, in the age of, of TV shaming people. Right. Yes. Yeah, we understand true. people are busy. Yeah. But if you're not watching, you now have 36 episodes to catch up on. Which is good, though. And I, but I wouldn't suggest binging it. Don't I know somebody it. Should Don't said, they it. probably said I shouldn't say that. I will say it as a caring person, maybe three, four episodes at a time. Yeah. Why? It's emotional. Emotional warfare. You don't commit emotional warfare on yourself. <laughs> even if you're binging it, even if you're if you're watching them recorded, just spread it out. Yeah, spread it out. Spread it out. Spread Enjoy it. Get through it. them all, but spread let it, it out. Let it soak in. Yeah. And I, a lot of people are upset with how Jack died. Your husband went into cardiac arrest. Mrs. Pearson, your husband has died. Mom, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we were just here for a burn. Yes. On his arm. No. Do you... You really don't remember talking to me? No, just I remember, ago? Mrs. Pearson. Is there someone we can call for you? Are you out of your mind? So what are other things that the writers are going to do to everybody, like torture them? Do to what clues? everybody. Yes, you know they're going to torture everyone watching. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the thing. There's so many, like, different storylines that are, like happening right now. There's what's going on with Toby and Kate. Now that Jack is gone, what else about his life are we gonna learn? And for us, it's fostering and you know possible adoption and all those types of things. So there are all these places to go, mm -hmm. you know? And what we always are surprised at, I am surprised at every season, the imagination of Dan and the writers. Because they do these things that Literally, I have gotten on the floor. He's told me a storyline. I've gotten on the floor <laughs> in a fetal position and rocked like a baby back and forth. And Chris, I had no idea. So do they put you in some type of suit on the show? Because yeah, you costume, are yeah. not, you know, the same. Yeah, right I'm, not, I'm not as heavy as Toby. Yes, there's a brilliantly designed uh, costume that I wear. Do you guys feel as connected to the show as the viewers? Everybody's so just 100% there when we're there. You know, it's not so much about what everybody's saying about the show. We're really quite invested. And, and for the longest time, we just were in this little bubble of just us in the show, and nobody really knew what it was. And then, oddly enough, I think we've managed in some way when we're on set to stay in the bubble mm -hmm. and continue to just invest. We do very much kind of invest when we're there. Told you I'd send you a postcard. Goodbye, my dearest Beth. The daughter I never had. Love, Will. Okay, so I just want to play a little quick fire round of questions. Just I love we're gonna games. Go through them. I know, these are my faves. Okay. okay, here we go. Do you prefer cats or dogs? Dogs. Uh, uh cats. Oh. Cool. Oh my god, we are so judgmental. I know. Oh, I was, god, I was so just sorry. one of your judgmental friends. Welcome to Judgment Stew. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> okay. okay. Who is the one person who would make you starstruck? Sade. Oh. What? Sade, That's great. any day of the what week. What a great answer. I love that her. Is. Um, uh, uh, Steve Martin. Oh, oh that's, that's good. That's a good one, too. That's good. What's your favorite place on earth? I'm going to say Montreal. Oh. I really like Really? Montreal. I love Montreal and Paris. I like those two. Okay. So far. So okay. far, I haven't been to Africa yet, which I want to go, but that was so far my favorite. Okay, Chris? I gotta say, in the presence of my wife. Wow. It's, you guys, you, you. All the points, all the It's pretty points. great, it's pretty great. This Is Us will be back in the fall, and I'm dying to see what happens next, and I have my tissues ready. But up next, Glenn Howerton from AP Bio. Do you remember your worst job? Oh my gosh, mine, I worked at the box office at the movies. Well, in the AP bio, actor Glenn Howerton landed his worst job as a biology teacher in an Ohio high school. And yes, he stopped by to share how much he's enjoying his new role. Glenn. Yes. 
you're not happy being a bio teacher. And I feel for you because my brother was a bio teacher, by the way. Really? Yes. So it was tough for him because, you know, he just wanted to really be, I think he wanted to be an actor. Oh. And so he, he and I, he and I are switched. Completely switched. switched. You almost killed me. Oh, what are you yeah, doing? So sorry. Let me show you Wait, something. Whoa, 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 Where are you going? Whoa. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and start to shut up now. My name's Jack Griffin. And I don't want to be here. How do you like being in AP Bio? How's it going? It's great. It's, it's really fun. I'm surrounded by smart, funny people that make me look smart and funny. And uh, that's kind of what it is, really, to be an actor, is just surround yourself with really smart people that make you look <laughs> better than you actually are. I mean, that's the smart thing to do. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, really how, that's how smart people succeed. They're not actually that smart. They just know how to surround themselves with smart people. And that works in everything, in every job. It doesn't have to just be in acting. And then, um, you know, have a good skin person that can make your skin look nice, a good makeup and hair person. It's all, you know, it's all a big lie. It's all... <laughs> You know, none of this is real. If you weren't acting and you had to go back in time and do a job that you absolutely hated, what would that job be? Oof. Um, anything that involves, like, inputting data. Like, I freak out if I get, like, a w, W2 form or W4 or W9 or whatever, all the Ws. I, I literally just want to throw them out the way. I'd be like, yes. just don't pay me. I'll, I'll do the job. Somebody else <laughs> fill these forms out. I can't stand that stuff. Government documents. Ugh. Passport, social security, everything. You're just like, what do you want? What no, do you no, no. Want? What do you want from me? Yes. Here's my name. Here's my intention. You know what I mean? Just give me my money. Exactly. I did the job. Why do, exactly. I, have to fill out, why do I have to fill out all these forms with W's on it's it? Ex- They're like, well, if you put a zero, then you know, oh. then they then they take all your taxes. If you put a one, then they take a little bit. And, but then the, the zero, you, they give you a little bit back later, it's or confusing. maybe not. And I'm like, just take whatever percentage of money I owe you and, and give Any- me the rest. Yes. Can Simple. we simplify this? Guys, we figured it out. We just simplified the tax code. (laughs) Glenn, what do you love and hate the most about high school? Um, I loved high school. I don't know. That's where all my friends were. That's that's where all the girls were. I was playing sports. Uh, I thought it was kind of great. I don't know. I like learning stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Sue me, you know? (laughs) Did you like bio? Yeah, I did. I liked I liked maths, maths and sciences the most. Yeah, I feel like that's where I failed. That's why I'm here. I think so that's I where. For a living. Yeah, it's very strange to be um, an actor and artist. I think most most of us like history and we like English and stuff like that. I I wasn't a big fan of history and English. I liked math. I like I like I like things where there's an actual answer to it. Mm. You know what I mean? But then on the other side of my brain, clearly I don't because I you know I'm an actor and I like just human behavior and there's no answer to that. You were born in Japan. You lived all around the world. That's true. And you know four languages, right? <laughs> Say what? Four languages. I don't know any languages. Yes, I, you I do. I barely know English. Where did you hear this? It was on internet. And you know, everything that's on internet's truth nowadays. Okay, yeah. So I speak German. Okay. Farsi. Um, and I speak a little bit of Russian. Wow. And, um, and I speak Italian. Which one was the hardest to learn? I'm just kidding. I don't know any of those languages. None? I literally always speak English. I believed you right now. I know. I know you did. I'm an actor. I appreciate you so much for hanging out on the stew. This was really fun. Don't go far. Up next, another funny man, Ben Feldman from Superstore and Brian T. from Chicago Med. Accommodations for Talk Stoop are furnished by 135 West 52nd. These exclusive private condominiums feature one to four bedroom residences, duplexes, and triplex penthouses. Luxurious finishes and amenities await in this 12,000 square foot private lounge, ideal for relaxing and entertaining alike. Recharge in the 75 foot long custom mosaic tiled pool, this is elevated living at its finest. Available for immediate occupancy. To learn more, visit 135west52nd.com. Ben Feldman, the Emmy-nominated actor and star of NBC Superstore, caught the acting bug at a very young age. But you know what else I learned about him? He's nothing like his crazy character from fictional megastore Cloud9. How many takes are there going to be? I know. (laughs) How are you? I'm fine. Welcome to the stew. (laughs) Thank you. I'm happy to be here. This This is lovely stew. Thank you very much. We try to clean it and keep it. It's nice and clean. It's comfortable. I wish this was my stew. Oh, but you live, do you live in L.A.? Mm Mm-hmm, I do. But you can have a stoop in L.A. New Yorkers, 
You swear. can't have a stoop in LA. You have a stoop in LA. It's, I have a stoop, in, I sort of have a stoop. It's a, a, like a, a walk up. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stoop at the top of a staircase. Is it, that still a stoop? Uh, this is exciting stuff, right? Yes. We are creating incredible content Yes, right now. Right now. Yeah. All right, the stoop, we get it. We okay, get we it. get it. Now get to the point. <laughs> Congratulations, season four, Superstore. Thank you, very excited. Gosh, it's hard for shows to have It's insane, seasons. yeah. Yes. You should, I never, I'm cynical. Um, and I've seen <laughs> a lot of shows get canceled. And I was like the one in, when we were shooting the pilot, who's like, all right, calm down, everybody. Like, where this isn't gonna like make it to air. Um, and now I look like the jerk in the cast because everybody was right. Like, it's here we are coming into our, our fourth season. At one point, I had a crush on Jonah, and that's oh. all in the past. Exactly. Wait, what, you, when did you, did, you, yeah, no, never mind. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Because if, even if we, he didn't know. Do you still love each other? What? No, we never, that, we, we've moved on. Uh huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What pranks are we gonna see with the Cloud9 employees? All I can say is if you're like someone who watches the show, um, now I'm looking at you so you know this is <laughs> earnest and genuine, um, your, your mind's gonna be blown by the end of the season. Crazy, crazy stuff. None of which I can talk to you about. Nothing. So what are we doing here? Talking about the stoop, man, that's what we're doing. Is it a stoop? It is a stoop. And you're a new dad, semi-new dad. That's one reason, I guess, to be happy. Oh my gosh, how's dad life going for you? It's exhausting. <laughs> it's so much work. What did you have to give up? Because I heard that's what sleep, mm, sleep, oh. television. Oh my gosh. We like the other day we tried to watch, like our first show in two, three weeks or whatever. And we put on Atlanta because that just came back. And three minutes in, you just hear like, <laughs> and I'm just like, that's it. That's all we're gonna. That's literally all of the TV we're watching uh, this Ever. week. I watched three minutes of Atlanta. I know how Atlanta <laughs> begins. Um, but you know, you also create like something amazing. So mm, it's a wash. Do you want more kids? Maybe yeah. not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a lot, and it's way more work for her. Um, I'm sitting here complaining, and then I'm gonna go home to like my room at the Four Seasons. <laughs> yeah. I'm a jerk. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's great. It's all worth it. Would you want your child to be in this industry? No, because no, I mean, no, you no, started no. when you were young, six, right? When you got on stage. No, no, yeah, but that was like camp. That was like, yeah. I did it when I was like, I like acted like, I was, I just am an adult that never grew out of his little kid hobby. Yeah. That's by the way, what everybody you're talking to on the stoop is. Right. Just like a child who didn't like get a business degree. <laughs> did you ever have a non-industry job? I waited tables for one day here in New York, two days here in New York. I was an acting major in school. Mm -hmm. So I waited tables because I assumed that that's what I'd actually be doing for the majority of my career. Oh, you knew. Yeah. But I knew I'd be a waiter. <laughs> yeah, duh, of course. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to play a quick fire round of questions, okay. just a couple. Okay, so what's the one thing you can't live without? Booze. Not your wife or and my wife. She's and not a your thing. child. How dare you call my wife and child things? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you caught uh -huh. yourself. You're good. Yeah. Okay, who is the one person who would make you starstruck? <sighs> I feel like, well, is it, it's such a boring, like Obama would be, like Obama or, or just Obama. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> trying to think of another president. I mean, somebody who's made like world, the world change in some kind of a way. What do you think about when you're alone in the car? Yeah. Most likely, I am berating myself for whatever embarrassing thing I said or did, in wherever I, I'm coming from in the car. <laughs> All Thank right. you so much for hanging out on the stoop. It was great being on the stoop. Of course. Next, from the Fast and the Furious to Chicago Med, actor Brian T is working hard to break down barriers. How are you, Brian T? What's going on, man? Then much, you know, doing a little television show, that's about it. Hey, Chicago Med, just a little something, something. You actually live in Chicago. We were talking about this. I do live in Chicago. Filming for Chicago yes. Med, and it's freezing out there, isn't it? It is. They have this temperature gauge, and it says, at times 40 degrees, but you really have to look at the feels like, because the feels like will be at 12. <laughs> so I feel like it's this odd, weird situation where it's never really as, as warm as it seems. They're lying to you. They basically are. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely lying to me, absolutely. How is it playing an impulsive doctor? Are you impulsive in your personal real life? No. Oh my gosh, yes you are, you hesitate. No, I'm not. No, impulsive, I would actually, okay. did I like? No, 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 you're I, really nice. I hope so. Um, I feel like, I feel like Dr. Choi, you know him. Yeah. I feel like he has this particular code and these particular set of rules and this kind of moral compass 
that uh, he kind of definitely tries to ride. But especially this year, I feel like he's opening up. I need a side console. 28-year-old female. Father found her tied to a bed at his ex-wife's house. Some lacerations, pressure sore. She's extremely dehydrated. When you're learning to do this role, do you actually retain different skills as a doctor? Like, could you do simple things? Like, if you're on a plane and someone's like, hey, do we have a doctor? Call 911. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, Can you do what? little stuff? I could check a pulse. <laughs> I feel like this. I feel like we've trained in certain situations, but they're all kind of pretend situations. Right. And if a real life incident were actually to happen, I may be able to like diagnose what they call like the ABCs. Right. But other than that, I feel like I should leave that to the professionals. I don't want to be CPR. like, back off, yeah. <laughs> play a doctor on television. I know what I'm doing. Is it hard to get into that, I guess, mind frame of trying to be a doctor or is it? You know, I feel like we have probably, you know, some of the best consultants on our show and that we're so trusting with them to help us do the right thing. Um, as far as the mentality of a doctor, we have um, Dr. Andy Dennis, who runs basically the Chicago County Hospital over there, and he lets us come in and shadow. Oh. And when we shadow, we kind of get this real-life experience. And he's not shy about it. You know, if a patient comes in with <clears throat> a gunshot wound or something like that, he lets us kind of get right in, kind of get in the action. When you go shadow him, there's a sense of reality um, that you just take home with you. And I, and I need that as far as playing the role is concerned. I feel like I need that sense of reality or that, that aspect because once you're on set and you have all the cameras and lights and everything, it's, it's just basically pretend. How do you feel about the roles in Hollywood for Asians? Is it still very stereotypical? Uh, I feel like I'm very fortunate to play this role in mm -hmm. this show. The roles for Asian Americans are very small and minute and they're definitely right. much more stereotyped. But I've been so blessed to play a full-fledged character. Um, with ranges from up and down, and not necessarily because I'm Asian, but just because I'm a human being. I would like to see much more of that kind of expand into other roles, and I feel like there's a great slow kind of progression into that direction. Obviously for African Americans mm -hmm. and Hispanics, and then hopefully down triple to you know, other ethnic minorities. Is it hard in Hollywood? I'm always so curious. Yeah, it's hard in Hollywood. What, what makes it so hard? Um, there's a lot or a, a giant group of people wanting to be an artist. I also feel like there's certain things that you don't necessarily have control over. The roles that come along aren't necessarily what you want to do, but you need to do in order to get to a place where you can kind of pick and choose your battles. Mm -hmm. What makes it difficult is the rejection, because you kind of put yourself out there, you put your soul out there, and you know, nine times out of 10, the answer is no. And I think they, a person said that in a lifetime, someone can have several or multiple jobs, take a bunch of interviews, and get a bunch of no's. But to an actor, you could probably live that lifetime in a week. I mean, it, it's just, you, you feel like you've built up this kind of armor of sorts every time you get rejected, or every time the answer is no, or every time you miss something very close. It just kind of builds. And I don't know if it gets easier, but it gets much more acceptable. Well, in between your auditions, what do you like to do for yourself? I have a two and a half year old. Oh my gosh, you're busy. I am. You're done. And I'm an amazing wife, so all of my time wants to be with them. Before you get off the stoop, we want yes. to play a game with you. Okay. It's one of my favorite games, because uh -oh. it's so much fun. All right, so Brian, in this cup, we have a bunch of questions that were left behind by previous guests that stopped by on the stoop. So okay. all you have to do is pick out whichever card that you want, read off the question, and tell us who left it behind for you. Okay. Okay. If you see a cop in your rear view mirror, <laughs> uh -oh, what do you do? P.S. The car smells like weed. Oh. I'd be like, first, why does my car smell like weed? I would never have weed. I mean, let's be serious. Uh, what do I do? I basically would say, that's not me. <laughs> I'd be father. like, I'd be like, is that weird? <laughs> is that? That's weird. It smells like that in my car right now. Good. All right? And like, catch it before he does, right? Oh, he rolls down good. the window. I'd be like, wait a second, officer. Yeah. Smells like weed in here. <laughs> Where is that from? 
Did you have weed on you? Yes. I think that's what I would do. Turn it around, right on them. Catch it before they do. Exactly. You guys should all try it. (laughs) We're not done yet. Stick around. Abigail Spencer from Timeless is up next. If you love sci-fi, you'll love Timeless. The NBC time travel drama is full of twists and turns, and its star, Abigail Spencer, leads us on the exciting ride. Abigail, thank you for coming here. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You look so beautiful. Thank you so much. Timeless is here, and you're a professor, Mm -hmm. playing a history professor. Yes. Have you learned anything? Can I teach you something? Yes, please. (laughs) Tell me something that you had no idea about. That you're like, oh my gosh, it was in your script, and you're like, I had no idea. I have learned so much from the show. Actually, we do a Hedy Lamarr episode Mm -hmm. and we go and traipse around the back lot of the Paramount Studios and we have these gorgeous, super Hollywood, super Katharine Hepburn costumes and we meet Hedy Lamarr along the way and something I didn't know is that she invented Wi-Fi. She was a scientist and she invented Wi-Fi but she let the patent expire so then NASA picked it up after it expired and she actually died almost in poverty, but she could have been a billionaire if she'd oh, patented that it. So patent your ideas. Sad. That's what I'm teaching you. <laughs> that makes me so sad. I know. It's so sad, but also like incredible that the thing that we all exist on was created by a glamorous, gorgeous actress woman. Whoa. I know. I know. Now, for the writers, that is a big part of mm-hmm. Timeless that they want to show and, you know, uh, remember the icons and the amazing women that have paved the way. Yeah. And why is it so important? We and- haven't explored them enough, you know, and that's that's what I hope we can really do with the show. We're all, everyone on Team Timeless is really intentional about doing that. And, and really, all of our stories were decided before the Me Too and the Time's Up movement. So there is a calling out across the world, that we need these stories, we want to tell these stories, we're in the middle of a revolution right now, and so what's so exciting about our show is we can go back and visit the previous revolution. Mm -hmm. It kicks you into learning, you know, you're not going to learn the full story, but you'll be like, I didn't know that, and then you go research it, and I find a lot of people are learning things that way. Do you feel that guys, some guys are insecure about this? Um, not real men. Yeah, okay, (laughs) talk about it, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. Yeah. I was on your Instagram, you have beautiful photos, oh, but you've you. been always highlighting strong women, so yeah. this isn't brand new for yeah, you. I just like telling women stories. I, the reason I chose to play Lucy was because I thought she, she was so unique because her superpower was her brain. Right. And I will say our creators were very intentional. They didn't want her to be over-sexualized. We're very aware that young women watch the show right. and how refreshing that you can just see someone whose intellect is their, you know, is their cape. And you're a phenomenal mom. I'm looking oh, at you right now. I'm like, how do you have a nine-year-old? I have a nine-year-old. And yes. are you mm-hmm. ever exhausted? You look beautiful. What? <laughs> Thanks to the team. I, li- I live in a state of exhaustion. Um, that's just my MO. I mean, you know, I will say there was such a huge transformation in my life when I became a mother right. and my quality over quantity, mm. you know, really, that was kind of the focus. So, you know, I'm here, be- yeah. you know, because this is important. Yes. And then I get to be a mom because that's the that's, most important. That's the most important. And um, I'm so grateful that I live in an age and a stage of life where I can do both. Thank you so much for hanging Thank out with you. us on the Thanks stoop today. today. Thank you. Oh, yes, the movable stoop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you miss these shows and you can't wait for the new seasons to return, you can go ahead and always catch up at NBC.com. And you know where to find us. Just head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search Talk Stoop. Don't be afraid to hit us up and join the conversation. All right. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next week.